everyone, how's it going? Uh, I want to address Game Pass because Game Pass is the greatest deal in gaming. But I've seen as we head into the Xbox Series X slash S launch uh, uh, next week, I think on Monday, in fact, or is it Tuesday? I don't know, on the 10th, that people are trying to tear down Game Pass as this thing that gamers don't want, as a thing that doesn't make sense. And this thing that is a waste of time. And again, people just don't want it, right? That That's what they're trying to tout out there. Like, why would you want Game Pass? It doesn't make any sense. The only argument to against Game Pass that makes sense, in my opinion, is you don't own your games. Just like subscribing on Netflix or Hulu or anything else, you have no control over the content. You have no control over ownership of, ownership of the games. You know, they can sift games in and out, and, you know, you, you don't get to control your access to games that way. That is obviously one of the big negatives of Game Pass, but it's expected, just like for streaming services, it's expected that, you know, you, this is always something that you accept for the convenience of having a lot of content for relatively little money. In fact, in fact a lot of content that's continually being added to for very little bits of money. And Game Pass is about to blow up even bigger because on the 10th, when the Xbox Series X and S launch, is also the same day that EA Access joins Game Pass. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, compelling reasons to get Game Pass. But somebody put out a post on Reset Era that kind of summarizes all of the points that I have hear, heard touted over the last few weeks and even today about why Game Pass is such a bad idea. And I wanted to go over it because I think that I love Game Pass and I feel that uh, while Nintendo and Sony have somewhat similar concepts kind of like games of gold and then you get the PlayStation Network thing and you have the the uh, SNES and NES stuff with Nintendo and now Mario 35 as well, Tetris Attack. So again, everyone's dabbling in this a little bit. I think what Microsoft is doing is scaring gamers and potentially making those that aren't fans of their platforms anyways jealous. So because they're jealous, they need to come up with reasons that it's a bad idea. So let's get into what is being touted out there on the internet about why Game Pass is so terrible for gaming. All right, see, this is put up by Shining Star, and it says, Reason one, people don't like having a lot of games to play. I, I have, like, over 80 games for Switch. <laughs> 80 games. Yeah, I don't like having a lot of games to play. Okay, I'll bite. Let's continue. Uh, everyone is always complaining about their backlogs and how they will never get to all the games they own. Having a bunch of games just feels like work. True. We do complain at times. Well, not really complain. I think complaining is the wrong way to put it. A lot of us mention that we have backlogs of games we haven't beat or haven't tried yet in, in our thing, whether it's from a Steam sale or just games that we, we've checked out or purchased, like indie titles but just haven't gotten to. I think all of us have games like that in general. But we all have those games. We all paid for those games. And because we have those games, because we paid for those games... It's just like on Game Pass. Yeah, there's going to be games on Game Pass that we don't use, that we don't play. So, what's your point? At least I didn't pay a flat fee to own a game that I'm never going to touch. The point is that we have backlogs in the first place, so how's this any different? On to the next point. Reason two, people don't care about old games very generalized obviously they will always pass up old stuff to play new games and part of that of a conversation no one cares if you are playing game pass so he's got two points here one is that nobody plays old games if that were true why is the nest classic and the snes classic sold out and nintendo having a hard time keeping it in stock why are you know it's such a huge deal that PlayStation 5 has backwards compatibility of PlayStation 4 if old games don't matter. People don't play old games. So why is all this backwards compatibility stuff such a big deal and such a big selling point then if people don't play old games? Because they do. People are constantly revisiting either games from their childhood or games from their back catalog that you mentioned we have that we never got to. In addition, sometimes people wait to pick up games because they're on a budget. You know, like it's going to be great on PlayStation 5 that I can go play all those PlayStation 4 games I missed because those PlayStation 4 games are going to be dirt cheap by the time I buy them. So that's just amazing, right? So yeah, I 
I honestly find this entire argument to be asinine. Uh, and then his second point here, where he mentions, you know, no one cares if you're playing Game Pass. You're right. Nobody cares if you're playing Game Pass. Nobody cares if you bought the game at launch. Nobody cares if you bought the game four months later when it cost $10. Nobody cares if you rented the game off Gamefly. Nobody cares if you bought it physically or digitally either. Whatever way you decide to play games only should matter to you. Truthfully, it should only matter to you. Like, a majority of my Switch library is digital. And guess what? Nobody cares. Who cares that a majority of my library is digital instead of physical? Just like, I don't care if a majority of your library is physical versus digital. I don't care if you enjoy game streaming services like Google Stadia. More power to you. I just used it, you know, not too long ago. What, a week ago? Two weeks ago? To to do, um, you know, a, a demo of uh, Phoenix Rising. I live streamed it on my Twitch. Like, yeah. I use game streaming services too occasionally. I've been streaming Control on my Switch. Nobody cares. Yes, we all like options. We all want to have options. And that's what sucks on the Switch, you know, when it comes to the games streaming like Control, is that there's only one option to, to play the game instead of multiple. But Xbox is giving you options. They didn't take away your physical games. You can still buy these games physically. You can buy them for 60 bucks a pop day one if you want, just like you used to. You can also... Also, I don't know, buy them digitally or rent them or just get Game Pass. See, what Game Pass is doing is tearing down the barrier to entry. Gaming is expensive. This upcoming generation game pricing looks like it's attempting to change the standard pricing to $70 a pop for AAA brand new next gen exclusive games. That's what the, what's attempting to be done. The pricing is attempting to change to 70. So gaming's about to get more expensive during a pandemic. Forgive me, but isn't Microsoft offering a budget-oriented way to deliver games a positive? And by the way, this whole, oh, who cares about old games? Okay, you don't have to care about old games. How about the fact that all new games are on it too? Every new first party, second party, whatever exclusive game to the Xbox ecosystem is going to be there too. All future id Software games is going to be there. All future Bethesda games are going to be there. As of November 10th, all future EA games are going to be there. Day one, brand new games are going to be there. Day one on Game Pass. People care about that. So it's not just about, oh, who cares about all those old games? You get every new game too, day one. Day one! There's no delay. There's not, oh, you get it three days later or a week later. Day one at midnight. Go ahead and play that game. I, what is the problem? What is the problem? Why does it matter? You know, you say no one cares if you're playing Game Pass. You clearly care if people are playing Game Pass because you're against it. Let's get to his final point. Reason three. More on Netflix for games thing. Games just aren't the same as movies and TV shows. No one sits down not knowing or caring what, what they are going to play. The whole browsing the library and just picking out something to play, I don't think that happens. So as someone with 70 plus games on my Switch, or 80 plus, I can't remember my last count, it's pretty high. Let me tell you. How many times have I gone all the way over to the All Games tab and just scrolled through my games to find something to play? How many times have you gone back on your game shelf? Like, say you have a, a shelf full of all these physical games. How many times have you guys gone back to your games, your game collection, and just kind of gone through to pick out something you want to play? It happens. Just because some gamers are tied into very specific games or certain types of games or one game for a long period of time doesn't mean that people don't browse through their library to pick something to play, just like we do with movies and TV shows. It happens with movies and TV shows. Well, you'll Even if you own a whole physical collection, I own a bunch of physical Blu-ray discs. Like Sometimes you just go through them to pick out something to watch. It happens. It happens in every entertainment medium. Just like you browse through your playlist on Spotify or whatever to play a song, or you browse through Netflix trying to find something. It's the same thing with games. People do this. Believe it or not, it's not uncommon for people to browse through their library of games to find something they want to play. And that's the same thing here with Game Pass. The issue, the issue I think this person really has, um, 
is, you know, because they, they titled their thread, I don't think Game Pass or Netflix for games makes sense. I think the issue they have is that Microsoft is offering something that its competitors can't afford to do. Microsoft is taking a loss on Game Pass, a massive loss. Phil Spencer has already come out and admitted that this is not a profitable venture for them. Now they're, they're looking in the long haul future where it could be popular or it could be have enough users to become self-sufficient and then eventually extremely popular. So, you know, he didn't mention what the barrier for that is, but he talked about getting up to 30 million, 40, 50, 100 million plus pe you know, people because Game Pass is, is being offered across a whole bunch of different devices, especially with xCloud integration coming involved as well. So what Microsoft's hoping is that they can hit critical mass and have hundreds of millions of people on Game Pass. At that point, it becomes profitable. They have enough subscribers, the gaming base has expanded to such a point that Game Pass is profitable. Despite Microsoft paying despite Microsoft paying all the developers for their games to be there. So if you think about this, what Microsoft is, is doing is investing in themselves. They're investing millions, if not billions of dollars, potentially $7.5 billion in Game Pass with that purchase of Bethesda. They are investing all this money into essentially Game Pass. And other companies can't really afford to do it. Now, Nintendo has a lot of cash. They could technically afford to take losses for a while to run a similar service. But does that seem like Nintendo's going something Nintendo's going to do when they still sell Breath of the Wild new for 60 bucks right now when Age of Calamity is coming out four years later, three years later, however long it's been? Like N Nintendo is not exactly going to be doing this. They might do it with their classic games, Nintendo Switch Online. Go right ahead, play Ness and SNES, but they're not doing this with their new, new games. Uh, and, you know, they don't quite have the similar service like the PlayStation Network and uh, Games of Gold has where you can get, you know, some new games uh, uh, added to the online, uh, like new, new old, new old games, I guess is the way to do it, where it can be a AAA game that maybe came out last year. Uh Nintendo does do some exclusive things like Mario 35 or Tetris 99, which now you can buy on its own. But yeah, that's not something that Nintendo seems to be dabbling in. Sony doesn't have the cash flow to do this. Sony already publicly stated the reason they don't have a Game Pass service is it's not profitable for them. They can't afford to do it. Now, Sony's got a big enough user base, as does Nintendo, to not need to do a Game Pass. And Microsoft has kind of sort of been behind in the market for almost its entire existence beyond the Xbox 360 days. But yeah, like I think that uh, what Microsoft is doing is smart. What Microsoft is doing is ahead of the game and is just getting to what gaming will eventually be someday, where everything is subscription fees. Right now, uh, all of our music playing is mostly subscription fees. All of our uh, video watching is now mostly subscription fees with Netflix being one of the first. And so they're just ahead of the game. And they're going to have hundreds of millions of users someday using Game Pass, using xCloud, uh, you know, and, and just enjoying games for cheap. I think when I was a kid, I dreamed of a service like this. As I was renting games for, you know... 10 bucks a night sometimes it was kind of ridiculous what, how much they were charging to rent games back then uh back in the 90s well, as i was renting games you don't think i'd rather take that 10 bucks throw it at, at, at a service like game pass and just have access to hundreds and hundreds of games including brand new games day and date release of course i would the problem this person has is game pass is too good of an idea now again you don't own games and you might worry what this means for the future of gaming if it got if it got big but those aren't the concerns brought up. The concerns aren't brought up about ownership. I, I hardly ever see the ownership argument mentioned. I hardly ever see people mention they're worried about the future of games if Game Pass blows up. I hardly see those mentioned as valid points, which are the only valid points I think exist to not like Game Pass. Otherwise, let the rest of us that can't afford to buy hundreds of games every single generation enjoy the fact we now have access to more games than we maybe have ever had access to before thanks to game pass i am so stoked that day one i don't have to buy a game for the xbox series s i could just subscribe to a month of game pass which by the way is probably included free in the box so i don't even have to spend any money on games day one and i could probably already play games right there on an xbox series x so yeah that's exciting i like that I'm not going to apologize for it. Game Pass is one of the most brilliant ideas to happen to gaming in a hell of a long time. And I can't wait to see it become such a success that Nintendo and eventually Sony hop on the bandwagon too. Because they will. They will. Nintendo will probably at least. Nintendo's already hopping on game streaming. Nintendo, Nintendo will get there. Um, Sony, we'll see. Again, it requires an investment because you have Game Pass to compete with now. 
you you can't just come out and charge sixty bucks a month for a service that it's only ten bucks on on Microsoft. So Microsoft is setting the bar. Other people have to meet that bar. So it is what it is. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.